Hi, welcome to a mystery teardown. Thank you very much for uh, Eli Kamensky for sending this one in. Um, he's from Washington in the USA. And what it is, is a defibrillator analyzer for analyzing defibrillators. Go figure. Specialized bit of kit where, like, you've seen these um, defibrillators. Uh, I've done a teardown, I believe. I'll link it in down below. Um, where you have the uh, test pads, like the chest pads, where you put them on the sternum and the apex. Um, don't worry, I can put my hands over here because it's not going to generate a uh, high uh, voltage on this thing. It's designed as a uh, load-based uh, tester device. Um, look, check it out. It's got a scope output on it. It's got RS-232 serial output. It's powered from a 9-volt battery. So I'm not going to do any damage to myself. And uh, it's done for, by Dynatech Nevada. And made in the USA. USA. And has pretty recent calibration too. Let's check it out. Awesome. Of course, it's an analyzer. It doesn't need to actually generate um, the uh, the pulses or anything like that. It just analyzes them coming from the actual defibrillator itself. So it's got a real-time scope output, which will no doubt scope. Eh, get it? So this thing probably costs real serious money because it's a specialized bit of kit. Anyway, Let's do a quick tear down. Like it'll just have some like uh, sense amplifiers and stuff like that. I suspect I don't suspect a huge amount of magic in it, but you never know. Let's go. There we go. Ta-da! We're in like Flynn. Oh no, there's a fair amount of magic. Oh no. Oh the big, of course. You need the big dummy resistors. Wow, the Dale dummy resistors. Check them out. Of course you need those. Oh, what monsters! I've never seen one so big! That is ridiculous! Are these like a custom thing? 25 ohms, 1%. Made in Mexico. I don't want my Mexican viewers. Oh, this is fantastic! And looks like it's an old design because we've got old school dip ROMs by the looks of it. Let's go further. Well, this is actually a really nice physical design. Look how the apex and the sternum uh, mounts are just uh, like have those uh, PCB threaded inserts in there. And then they're just uh, screwed into the front like that. Absolutely brilliant. And of course, these uh, binding posts up here as well go directly into the PCB. Really nice design. And as I said, like it's just going to be a uh, sense amplifier here. Looks like we've got a couple of uh, sense op amps over here. Of course, I completely forgot about you need uh, the big dummy resistors to dump all of the uh, power into this thing. Now, we've actually got two in series uh, across the apex and the sternum. So we've got this one and then this one in series here. I can't remember the output voltage of a uh, typical defibrillator, but wow, I mean, these are absolute monsters. Look at them. And then, of course, you've got some uh, secondary stuff here. It looks like these are all in a string configuration. Again, if you have a look here, um, high voltage. So it's basically just a high voltage differential amp. So it's basically just one huge load across here, which is uh, 50 ohms load right across there. Why 50 ohms? I don't know. Is that some industry test uh, standard? Because it's not for RF reasons, that's for sure. Um, you know, transmission line matching or anything like that. And then it looks like uh, it just simply comes out here. And all these, you can probably might be able to see the traces under there. But these are basically all in series. I'm not sure why they're alternating between these two different types of resistors here. Um, that's interesting, but they're obviously trying to get a high voltage uh, resistor here, which then just drops it straight into there. So, uh, like, that's it. And then we've just got a differential amplifier and Bob's your uncle. Aha, uh -huh. upon closer inspection, these aren't in series. It doesn't like alternate like this one in series with that one in series with that one. It's uh, these regular axial ones in series uh, together. And look, these ones I can't see because the PCB tracer is on the bottom. So maybe it's like got some intermixed um, dual sense line or something like that. But yeah, it's just uh, these ones here in series by the looks of things on the top here. And as for the circuitry, all we've got here is an LF442. Uh, That's a dual JFET op amp. We've got a couple of uh, ICL, uh, just CMOS op amps over here. We've got a 7660 uh, voltage inverter because we've only got a single 9 volt rail. So they're obviously generating the uh, negative rail with that puppy. And that's basically all she wrote. And that's pretty much all I expected.
There's something I didn't notice before. Look, a Fluke calibration seal. It must have been calibrated at uh, Fluke's Cal Lab. Uh, presumably, it's not like a Fluke uh, product. So, yeah, maybe they have the test facilities to do it. That's probably like your regular cow house probably isn't going to do this. Oh, they might if you give them the procedure and everything else. I don't know. They might be able to do it as a custom job. But, yeah, maybe Fluke just, they have a house that just, uh, you know, know how to test these things. And I'm impressed by the uh, shielding on the test board here. Look, they've got it both sides, and what is that? <laughs> it's like an insulating uh, sheet, but I just haven't seen this, like, wood grain finish. So it's really interesting material. It's, it's not uh, elephantide, um, or uh, not elephant hide, elephantide. Um, it's not that. It's like some sort of, like, uh, formica, or like you'd get, like, on a bench top. Interesting. They're obviously using it for, you know, superb electrical, uh, you know, high voltage insulation. Um, and it'd be chosen for a reason. Let's take a look at it. Hey, there we go. Everything's socketed on this thing. So they thought about, uh, you know, repair of this thing because they probably make like dozens of these or hundreds tops or something like that. It uh, would not be a high volume product. But yeah, this is really old school. Is there a date code? Yeah, date codes of 1990, so this thing is uh, 27 years old. Wow. And it's your classic microprocessor architecture, RAM, your two ROMs, uh, so it must be 16-bit, that'd be 8-bit each, and our processor, what do we got? And the Hatashi fanboys go wild, HD 63A03, I'll whack in the data sheet. And we've just got a bunch of uh, analog stuff here, and looks like, of course, we need an ADC. What is it? Old school stuff, <laughs> National Semiconductor ADC 1205 Classic 12-bit uh, ADC that would be used on a microprocessor-based system because it's designed to hook into a uh, microprocessor data bus. And curiously, next to that, we've got an old school DAC 0830 um, 8-bit DAC in this thing. So I thought this would just sense uh, the signals, but it's obviously using that to generate, unless it's using it to generate some offset level or uh, something like that. I don't know, but it might make sense that it's got some built-in uh, self-test or something like that, perhaps. Actually, I just found the uh, user manual for this thing on the Fluke website. So, um, I don't know, do, uh, maybe Fluke did offer it or something like that. Certainly not Fluke uh, branded, though, in the manual or uh, anything, or on the uh, device itself, but... Hi! Check this out. I found this on the Fluke Biomedical Division page. It's a paper on human impedance variability and defibrillator test protocol. Why 50 ohm loads are not enough to test modern defibrillators. Remember, the model that we're looking at is 27 years old. So, you know, it's really ancient. But yet, the Fluke Biomedical Division, there you go. That's why it had the Fluke thing on there would have been tested by the Fluke Biomedical, decalibrated by the Fluke Biomedical Division. And uh, let's just go through it, because this is fascinating stuff. I'll link it in down below, of course. You can read it for yourself. Um, but yeah, blah, 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 why we have to do it. Um, current, not energy, defibrillates. Uh, successful defibrillation requires enough current to be delivered to the heart muscle during the shock. It must transit through the chest, thorax, and the impedance it represents. Uh, uh, body mass, skin resistance, tissue type, and amount all play a part in the chest, thorax, impedance presented to the charge delivered by the defibrillator. Uh, transthoraic, word of the day. Transthoraic? if I'm pronouncing it correctly, impedance equals the body's resistance to current flow. It's typically the definition of impedance. Uh, human impedance variability has been shown from vary from 25 ohms to 180 ohms. Reference down below. Um, awesome. Uh, energy in respect to impedance is a determining factor to successful defibrillation. So that's why, the, you know, like 50 ohms just doesn't, a static 50 ohm load doesn't cut the mustard anymore. Um, and age, disease, well, I'm getting older. My, is my resistance going up? Probably. <laughs> my resistance to bullshit is going up, that's for sure. Uh, successful defibrillation requires sufficient current to the heart muscle, blah, 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 transthoracic impedance, and schematic and formula. Brilliant. Look at this. Um, 
and there you go there's a 300 joule at 50 ohm uh, millisecond pulse typically like it does it over eight milliseconds as i think we've shown in a previous uh, video that's a monophasic uh waveform the typical two electrode approach that you get on uh, most defibrillators like if they have you up at a hospital or something they might have you know more but you know you see it in the movies the paddles you know um you never see them put them in the right locations it's like just across the it's hollywood anyway uh how defibrillators count for human impedance variability uh yes because they they now do the biphasic waveform and it's supposed to account for all that sort of stuff and uh i've looked at these in the previous and then you can get the pulsed biphasic which is the oh shiller good on your shiller obviously named after uh the person who uh founded that one uh, the pulsed biphasic waveform, uh, low impedance, uh, delivers more current than required, exposing patient to potentially harmful high peak currents. Uh, average impedance, it uh, depends on the on the person. So they've got to knock it back. Anyway, there you go. Ah, 50 ohm test loads enough to ensure output conditions and modern day defibrillators. Do all of hospital patients have the same impedance? No! <laughs> Testing beyond the 50 ohm load is necessary to ensure defibrillator. There you go. No doubt they have recommended test devices these days oh there you go there is an iec standard there you go refire to be tested at different resistances ta-da 25 through to 175 ohms is the modern standard so this one is no good um even though it was what last calibrated um very recently 2013 was it anyway it might have been good enough for you know, some old gear or something brilliant selectable load accessory of course fluke sell a selectable load accessory the Impulse 7010, there you go. Um, so I maybe Fluke Biomedical bought out this company because um, they're using the Impulse name. So uh, there you go. So interesting. That's the modern one. There's all the references for those played along at home. Beautiful. Anyway, um, let's power it up because the DAC inside this thing does generate some uh, cardiac test waveforms, which presumably will come on the scope output. So let's give it a ball. So if we switch it on here and... Well, firmware? Yeah, I don't know if we've got the latest firmware. We'd have to get out the old EEPROM programmer and the UV eraser. Um, somewhat curiously, we go into our perf for performance. So it generates performance waves, uh, performance waveforms. And we can do an auto sequence, or we can go into manual here. And, well, we don't want a zero output, do we? Ah, oh, bugger that. Um, there we go, 240 beats per minute ECG. There you go, a 2 hertz triangle, 1 kilohertz sine. Just various test signals from that 8-bit ADC. Four-second pulse, two seconds, zero out. There we go. Let's do a 240 beats per minute wave. So I can measure, like, energy, peak energy of the pulses and things like that, and you can test a setup for a 100.5 joules, which might be a standard uh, a defibrillator output. And it can do auto-sequence testing on uh, various pre-programmed uh, products and things like that. So presumably, you can, you know, there's a blank one in there, as you saw. You could uh, do that. But, you know, like a whole bunch of stuff specifically related to um, vent, like, vent, like, cardiac terminology i don't know you'd have to you know normal sinus uh waves you'd have to go through like uh the manual at which i'll link in down below and just to see what this thing's capable of and how you use the external uh terminals and stuff like that we're not too interested in the operation of this thing just let's just say it's a comprehensive bit of kit for doing pretty much any testing on a defibrillator well i had to open up the damn thing again to get into it to probe it because i didn't have the uh like a phono um <laughs> output to scope like i just like well i could probably cobble one together somehow but it's easier just to open it again but i don't seem to be getting an output though unfortunately so this thing might hence maybe why it was tossed or whatever um it may be cactus like the output amp i think here that little metal can package down in there i think's the output amp um so uh, yeah it's just supposed to be output in a waveform and it's not well i had to go all the way back to the dac over here and i found a dac uh test point that i could use and ta-da there it is 240 beats per minute but look at this isn't this a crusty waveform <laughs> you can see the you can see the eight bitness of it let me zoom into that look at that oh that's terrible muriel <laughs> i mean that's not even 8-bit resolution that's just generating 
Like, I, like, how many bits is that? Like, five? Ridiculous. But hey, it's going to be good enough for a test waveform. This test waveform is designed to test, like, uh, monitor outputs and uh, stuff like that. So, like, you know, cardiac waveform monitors and things like that. So we can uh, change that to... And there's our sine wave. That's not terrific. <laughs> And even down at uh, 30 beats per minute, we don't get anything better than that. So, like, that could be, like, a function of, like, how fast the process is operating. You know, they went, oh, you know, look, we only need something near enough, and it's not going quick enough, and they just want to output a bit, oh, 80. <laughs> They're at least got an 8-bit DAC, and they couldn't use it. <laughs> it's just hilarious. They'd all have to be tested out at the factory. They'd have to be field tested if you're doing these things properly. Some people just buy them and when the date they put them there in situ, wherever it is in the public space or whatever, or the office, and then once they expire, they might like, toss them out or they might get them refurbished and then you might use this bit of kit to uh, refurbish and put a new battery on it, retest them, uh, stuff like that. So obviously uh, 50 ohm dummy load is a standard. That's 95 watts. So that's almost you know, like 190 watts uh, dummy load there. And they've just got some high voltage sense lines uh, going off to a differential amp. And that's, you know, <laughs> that's pretty much it. And then they're just analyzing it with a 12 bit ADC because cardiac waveforms aren't anything, you know, particularly high frequency. So you can just use a, you know, an old school 12-bit uh, microprocessor ADC in there, operated at a bugger all, I don't know. What, you'd probably only need like a kilohertz sampling rate or something like that. Nothing uh, terribly high at all. So that's a real interesting specialized bit of kit and probably cost, and you know, a pretty penny, no doubt. So thank you very much, Eli uh, Kamansky, for sending that one in. It's really interesting. It's still works it probably you know it's got fairly recent calibration on it um and what good is it I, it's a dummy load for testing the ecg um for testing defibrillators so if i ever do another tear down of a defibrillator and i have a working one then i might be able to dump it into a load here and see what happens but yeah anyway it's like like this is only designed for pulse load of course it's not you know not dissipating 90 190 watts continuous it's just designed for pulse load applications but it's really nicely designed i like that so if you like the video please give it a big thumbs up and if you like mystery teardowns give it a big thumbs up too catch you next time